All right, you're moving. And if you're planning a DIY move and you want it to go as smoothly as possible, we've got some tips for you. Now, because of how much we have to cover about DIY moving, we're gonna split this into two videos. And this is part two. So don't forget to check out part one if you haven't already, but let's get started. In part one, we covered boxes and packing, how to make sure you get that right. That's because it's essential to moving correctly. But in this video, we're gonna be focused on the transportation, truck in particular. How do you get your goods from one to the other and why does that matter? So let's start with a scenario in which you're gonna be renting a truck and talk about that. If you're gonna be renting a truck, there are two major important factors that you're gonna to need to consider to figure out which one is right for you. And the first is size. How big of a truck should you rent? Now you'll determine this by the number and the size of the items that you need to transport, but it's also the distance of your move. Because everyone understands that the more you have, the bigger the truck, but it becomes even more critical to choose a truck that can accommodate everything as the distance becomes greater. That's because think about this, you don't wanna be making additional drive time if you don't have to, because that'll save you money and reduce the fuel and minimize the time you have to rent the truck. Now, this might not matter as much, and you might be able to get away with a small box truck if you're moving like a mile away. The extra trips, not a huge deal. But that's not ideal for a move that's 75 miles away. That's a lot of back and forth. And it's downright impractical if you're moving 150 or 200 miles or more. So most rental truck companies will provide estimates based on the number of rooms that can typically be accommodated in the back of their trucks. Here's an example. A 26 foot rental truck is typically suitable for about five to seven rooms. Now, let me clarify, that means rooms, not bedrooms. So if you're planning and you've got things such as a family room, a den, a kitchen, a garage, a basement, a shed, these are rooms you're gonna wanna continue to think about because you might need more than one 26 foot truck. But the second factor to consider is truck height. And that might be a little bit confusing, but let me talk about it, because I don't mean the height of the total truck, I mean the height of the truck floor from the ground. And that's because not all trucks and trailers that you can rent have what we call mover-friendly heights. The lower the truck is, the lower the distance from the ground to the truck floor, the easier it is to load items and with less effort. And this is particularly relevant for those who might wanna rent a trailer from like a freight company or a non-specialized moving company. See, I've seen people make real mistakes here when they're trying to push or carry items up a ramp that's on like a 30 degree angle. And that's because their truck was too high and they didn't have a long enough ramp. It's dangerous, it's unsafe, and it's unwise. At best, it's a ton of extra effort. It's a lot to push boxes up a 30 degree ramp. But at worst, it's an injury. Nobody wants that. When you rent the truck, a lot of these rental companies will have options. So which one's right for you? Well, it depends on the truck height. And let's break it down. If you have a truck, that is about 20 to 26 inches from floor to ground, then you can use about a 10 foot ramp. That will be nine to 12 degrees. If the truck height floor to ground is 26 to 30 inches, go up to a 12 foot ramp. If it's 30 to 45 degrees, or inches I mean, from, from floor to ground, it needs a 14 foot ramp. And if you're gonna use a standard freight trailer, which is typically between 45 and 48 inches from ground to the floor of the truck, then you need a 16 foot ramp. That's 13 to 14 degrees. Now, if you don't wanna get a truck, you might be thinking, what about those portable storage boxes? Those are pretty cool. How many of those would I need? And to be honest, I can't tell you how many you need. And that's because every company has different box sizes and weight requirements but they'll be able to help you calculate it if you visit them online or if you give them a call. But here's what I'd say. If you're considering them, what else should you consider besides the number? And the first would be the size. Now, a larger container might accommodate more of your belongings, but it might also be practical to rent smaller ones. I mean, think about if you live in a small driveway or apartment or townhome complex where space is an issue, smaller boxes might be better. But it's also access and the duration of your use you'll need to think about how often and quickly you're gonna to need to access all of your belongings. I mean, if you need to frequently access your items while you load in and out, you might consider renting extra containers to avoid having to unload and reload a single container over and over and over if you need to get in and out of it. But again, lastly, it's delivery and placement because you need to consider where the containers will be delivered. Not all locations can accommodate large containers. Again, it's apartment complexes that are notoriously difficult here. Now, planning is key. Each decision from size and number of containers to the frequency of access, delivery location, they all play a significant role in ensuring a smooth transition. But remember, in all of this, no matter how you move, it's okay to ask for help. Moving is a life-changing event. The more support you get, 
the better the transition will be. Now, moving is just stressful, so it's crucial to surround yourself with supportive family and friends. But remember, each helper's time and effort, they're valuable, so be considerate. But also remember that help might include professional movers, so don't count them out. They do cost money, but the stress of life, time off constraints from work, general inconvenience, I mean, these are factors that will cause you to worry. And if so, at least grab a quote from a few good movers. It might be exactly what you need. But if not, good luck on your DIY move.